Hi guys, and welcome to episode three of Dating Science. Today we're gonna to be asking a really important question. Do pheromones work? In 2001, in Sweden, they did a study on brain behavior, looking at whether pheromones would have any difference in the pattern of the brain waves. What they discovered was, unsurprisingly, females had a great response to male pheromones, and males had a great response to female pheromones. No shock there. However, what was absolutely amazing was that following that, um, one of my favorite TV shows, Brainiac, did a study to find out which smell was more attractive to women, pheromones, aftershave, or sweat. And you can actually watch that show on YouTube just by typing in pheromones and Brainiac. Now, as always in dating science, we don't just want to take somebody else's word for it. We wanted to do it for ourselves. So we got a handful of people to take part and one of our dating scientists to find a real live girl to find out which smell she preferred out of our lineup. Watch the clip and see which guy gets the lucky date. For this experiment, I wanted to make sure that we got the absolute very best for the team. So as well as our usual dating scientist, we managed to bring along a few other people to help us out. Naturally, they weren't all the most beautiful of men, however, they were each charming in their own individual way. Obviously, we needed our actual dating scientist to oversee the entire experiment, and a help from a real-life girl. To make sure the test was fair, we blindfolded the young lady so that she wouldn't be swayed by these gentlemen's incredibly handsome and rubbish good looks. After the dating scientist ensured that the blindfold was on completely tight so it wouldn't slip off during the study, we also made sure that there was enough room so that her nose would be in perfect working condition to take part in the test. Now for this study, we used three different fragrances. The first is a standard cologne or aftershave that you can find in any high street store in the world. The second is a bottle of pheromones donated by 20 of the manliest men that have ever existed. And the third was suntan lotion. With very little persuasion from the dating scientist, the men set about applying their various fragrances to themselves, on their neck, their underarms, wrists, and of course, on their bottom. Unfortunately for the poor chap that had the suntan lotion, he didn't have a, an easy time of applying the fragrance as the others. Still, I'm sure he really enjoyed doing it. And at least the dating scientist wasn't forced to apply it to the gentleman's bottom to help him out. The dating scientist did, however, get to guide the young lady around to test out the different fragrances. First of all was the aftershave. She checked the neck, of course the underarm area, which she did wash previous to recording the show, and finally, the chap's bottom. Next up is of course the pheromones, and the question is, would they be able to outmatch the cologne and aftershave? Lots of scientific studies have proven that women are attracted to pheromones. The question is, would it stand up to our sniff test? The final one was the suntan lotion. And this was the one I was personally backing, as I thought the women would make a positive association between the suntan lotion and sunbathing on the beach, an activity that I know they enjoy. Of course, the only way to really find out is to ask the young lady herself. Really right. great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is this your eyes? And tell me. Okay. Uh, subject number one. Subject, subject number one was the strongest, but I like that one the best. Subject number two, I couldn't really smell anything at all. <laughs> and subject number three was light and airy and fresh. And um, I want to go on a date with number one. Woo! <laughs> yes! <laughs> there you go, guys. It's a very happy person there. So, turns out the pheromone smell is not the most attractive one of the lot. Apparently, you're better off not spending your money in the sex shops on those strange pheromones that are supposedly guaranteed to get you the woman of your dreams, and instead rely on the uh, cosmetics and perfume and cologne industry, who apparently their millions of dollars every year that they're spending on research on great smells is actually paying off in a better way to go. 
Now, that's about all we have time for on the show today, although we do have time for just that one more quick question, and today's comes from Bob Bob. And Bob Bob wants to know what he can do on a date to make sure the relationship doesn't just fizzle out. Apparently, he's taking girls out on dates and he's ending up in that dreaded friend zone. Well, Bob Bob, the best thing that you can do is treat her like a girlfriend right off the bat. You wanna make sure that you lock her arm as soon as you meet her, guide her through and lead the entire date. Pre-plan where you're gonna be going in advance so that you can take her along, look like a bit of a leader, smile and flirt, and build the relationship from the very beginning, rather than doing what a lot of people do, which is turning up and allowing a little bit of an awkward moment, walking at a little bit of distance, and having the basic mundane conversations about what are you doing, how are you doing, did you have a good week? You wanna keep things a little bit more flirty. One of the best ways of doing that is to actually be very selective over your date. Don't make a point of doing the usual dinner and a movie thing, it's been done. Take them to a video game arcade. Take them out to the aquarium or to a zoo. Somewhere that's fun, where people are gonna really enjoy um, each other's company, where you can flirt, where you can laugh and joke and actually interact with each other, rather than trying to force a conversation over dinner. The distance from the table alone is gonna put a lot of awkwardness between you. Whereas when you're standing side by side, looking at a zoo, then you're gonna find things so much more enjoyable with the other person. That really is all we have time for today, but do check in next week where we're going to be having a very special viewer interactive episode. Make sure you don't miss it. Remember, if you have any questions which you would like the dating scientist to answer for you, all you have to do is send us an email and we'll do our very best to answer it live on the next episode. Simply email us at the following address, help at datingscience.co.uk. Don't forget to leave a comment and update your Facebook and Twitter status to tell people about the show. The more people that watch, the better our chances of keeping the show running.